Misa was not yet worried. Her brother sometimes tried to hide when it was time to fetch water from the well or haul wood or do anything other than help cook or care for the animals. He was not a disobedient child and probably did not really hide intentionally. He just tended to do things he liked. And he, thankfully, was very bad at hiding. He had only recently begun to ask real questions about the world. She had been able to keep him occupied with making him feel that the animals needed him and making sure someone was always with him. He identified naturally with that sheep, and it was a simple way of keeping his mind focused on what was around him now, not what was out in the world. But two days ago, he had asked where the sun went at night. She had said not to worry about that, just be thankful for its warmth when you have it. The sheep does not wonder where the sun goes, why should he? but he didn't smile at her like he usually did. And he had begun to ask for extra helpings at meals, despite her teasing about getting fat. She would have to prepare for the day when she could not stop him from heeding the call he surely heard. But where was he? She walked the length and breadth of the small farm, looked in all his hiding places, and casually asked each member of her family if they had seen him. With each answer and inspection, her heart chilled just a bit more. When she had exhausted all possibilities she could think of, her heart froze, and she felt the same dread of realization she felt on the day he was born. And she relived that story, the story that she often hoped was just a nightmare. When she was a few years older than her brother was now, she had gotten lost in the woods for days while foraging for herbs. As she wandered hopelessly, her nose caught the sweet and fruity scent of fresh-baked pastries under the smell of moss, soil, and bark that came from everything around her, including her clothes and skin. Following the scent, she came across a mud hovel with a rickety fence made of boughs and branches, upended into the ground. She could see on a table next to the doorway there were several pies cooling. Her stomach ground upon itself with hunger, as it was nearing winter and there was not much left in the woods by way of hearty food to forage. She lost all manners, immediately scooping handfuls of delicious pie into her mouth. It happened to be her favorite, sweet potato and tears of joy streamed down her face. After a few mouthfuls, she recovered herself and raised her hand to knock at the door and beg pardon and shelter from the owner. Unexpectedly, the door swung open before her knuckles touched the wood. She called out and stepped cautiously inside. As she did, she felt a strange pull come from the darkness before her, like when she stepped in mud and her shoe was left behind when she tried to pull her foot out. Now she felt her whole body was like that shoe, and the doorway was that slurping muck. She found she could only move forward and began to panic when the door creaked shut behind her. The faint light that filtered in from the windows seemed to fall only upon her. She heard a whispering, echoing voice, half in her head and half aloud. It seemed to come from all around her. What do you want, and what will you give? She tried to be brave, like the first time she killed a chicken for dinner. She asked for a bit of food and direction out of the forest. In return, she offered the herbs she had gathered. Something stirred in the darkness right next to her. A long gray hand with bony fingers and sharp black nails slowly moved toward her pouch. With the flick of a claw, it cut the bag from her belt and then receded. After a few moments, the voice returned right next to her ear and she smelled rot and felt a moist heat on her face. Fine specimens, it hissed 
Now two outstretched clawed hands appeared from directly before her and edged slowly toward her. But I will need meat to make a good savory pie with these. And you are already stuffed with sweet potato, so it will be a unique flavor. Misa shuddered and thought quickly, I can bring you a chicken. I'm sure my parents will let me bring one back to you. The hands paused, and from above her, almost near where she thought the low ceiling should be, two glowing blue-gray eyes appeared. They seemed larger and farther apart than would be normal for a person. The voice now came from their direction. You will tell no one about me, my home, or our bargain, or your whole family will perish one year hence. I will call to me the creature you love most. Until it comes to me, you will fatten it, so it is tender and fitting for my pie. Do you agree? The claws clacked and shivered in excitement and expectation right before her face. Thinking of the newborn lamb that she cradled the week before and cared for more attentively than any other creature on the farm, she hesitated. She was so sorry, but she was also very scared. And she knew that the lamb would one day end up as meat at some time anyway. She was a practical child. She agreed, and the shuddering hands drooped in seeming disappointment and withdrew back and upward toward the eyes, which narrowed to slits. Take as many pies from outside as you want. Follow the wisp. It will light your way out of the woods. The eyes disappeared. The door opened and she backed out of the hut. She took two more pies and hurried past the fence and far away from the hovel. As she finished the first pie, a small bobbing ball of light appeared in the distance. When she moved toward it, it blinked out and appeared farther away. It took several more hours to follow the lights out of the dense wood. The day after she returned home, she immediately took charge of the lamb and cared for it as if her life depended on it. She did love it more and more each day. She did not really worry about her bargain until almost a year later when she first saw her new baby brother. When he grasped her hand, she knew a new depth of love and she swore to be his best friend and to protect and love this tiny creature for the rest of her life. Realizing what the bargain now meant, her heart froze in dread for the first time. She felt that same terror now that her young brother had disappeared. Avoiding her parents, Misa snuck off with a hunting knife and bow. She did not arrive at the hut until nightfall. Her anger overwhelmed her, and she kicked in the door, shouting for her brother. Within, she found a normal, decrepit dwelling, full of cobwebs, ashes, broken furniture, and dust. She did not feel the fearful presence she had felt so many years ago, and saw no sign of her brother. But in the ashes of the hearth, she found a freshly baked pie with a piece of paper attached to it. When she touched it, the raspy voice sounded in her ears. You did not fulfill your obligation, girl. He was much too skinny for a decent pie, so I will use his youth instead of his flesh. You can go back to your farm and live a simple life, but as you came to challenge me, I do not think that is the life you have decided to live. Try to find him if you wish. I will give you two clues. First, the next time you see him, he will be a man, 
and will not know his former name. Second, I am giving him to my sister, so you will find him at sea, whether above or below depends on when you reach him. I get very little entertainment, so I will be watching. Enjoy the sweet potato pie. In frustration and rage, Misa hurled the pie against the hearth wall and screamed curses she had heard but never used herself. She searched around looking for more clues but found nothing inside the hovel. But outside, in the distance, was a small, bouncing ball of fiery light. Furious, she ran out into the night, following the jaunty flame. She followed it for days, passing into areas she had never explored. She had learned much about survival, and fared much better finding food and shelter. On the morning of the fourth day, she smelled something she never had before. A fresh and salty scent came to her on the breeze. As soon as she caught that smell, the wisp blinked out. She followed the breeze until she came to the tree line. Beyond this side of the forest was a flourishing town, and beyond the town, Misa saw, for the first time, the vast, sparkling sea. Taking in its beauty and mystery, she felt an elation and had to catch her breath. She now knew the sea was where her fate and fortunes lay. It angered her that it was the wicked entity who had revealed this wonder to her. She pushed that anger aside to focus her thoughts. She would go to sea, learn all she could, grow quick and smart and strong, and she would find and free her brother, her best friend, Although he was an anonymous man now, she would find the evil sisters who took profit and vengeance on a lost and hungry child and would destroy them and any who stood in her way. Her heart thudded as she etched these oaths into it and she felt her veins on fire with purpose and will as she strode forward into her fate.